Welcome to Motivated by Love. It's an honor to have you with us today. Anytime that I have an opportunity to share Jesus Christ and what He has done in my life and, and the word that He has given me, the uh, revelation He's given me, it's always humbling, but yet encouraging. Because when I hear from you, it lets me know that God has called me and has anointed me to do this. And I know today that you are going to be blessed by not only maybe some words that I have, but especially the guests that I have. Today I have Dr. Carol Elaine. She is a prophet, she is a teacher, she is a minister, she's an encourager. She is um, a founder of her ministry, Dr. Caroline Ministries. She has also founded a school and wow, women of the word and you just I can go on and on and on with all the things that she has has founded and done but most importantly I think we met some 20 years ago and we met in a women's ministry called a glow a glow international and God knitted our hearts together and today we once again are going to be doing this wonderful TV broadcast and then we're going to be ministering at Motivated by Love Encounter. And you can find us on Facebook, you can find us on Twitter, on Instagram, on Pinterest, all the social medias. You can find um, Motivated by Love Ministries, Reverend Sheila Zellers, and also Dr. Carol Lane. You can find her also. And so I just wanna encourage you today that we're going to be sharing how God brought us together, but we're also gonna be sharing the prophetic word that God has for this time. You know, each year God gives me a word and he gives me a direction. And each time he does that, I know that something is gonna be good happening. You know, no matter what you go through, no matter what happens in your life, God, when you have God in your heart, and maybe today you don't have God in your heart, you say, Pastor Sheila, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, I'm talking about the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. That all you have to do is say a simple prayer. All you say is, Father, I believe in your son, Jesus Christ. I ask you to forgive me of all my sin, come into my heart, live within me, fill me and baptize me with your Holy Spirit and let me live for you. And then go and find yourself a good Bible faith believing church. Now maybe you're in a country where you can't find a Bible faith believing church, then go to Motivated by Love YouTube channel and watch more of Pastor Sheila Zellers of Motivated by Love and we will disciple you in the word. But get a Bible, read that Bible every day, you'll find that when you call upon the name of Jesus Christ, He will be there for you. So with no further ado, I just want to in introduce you to my special guest and friend, Dr. Carol Lane. Welcome, Dr. Carol. Oh, thank you. I'm so glad to be with you. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad for you to be in Naples, Florida. We are, we're broadcasting live from uh, Parkway Life Church where uh, Motivated by Love is held live every third Tuesday. And um, maybe um, if you want to go to the YouTube channel, you can also, our Facebook, you can find some live broadcasts there and archive there. You'll be able to find more about the ministry there. Uh, Dr. Carol, we did meet in a glow many, many years yes. ago. And uh, I had uh, met someone, you know, it's always funny how you meet someone who knows someone. But one of my favorite things to do is whenever I'm traveling and ministering, I always ask if I go to somewhere I'm not familiar with, is there anybody around here that's really got an anointing of God <laughs> that can break, has that, that breaker break anointing? I yes. want that breakthrough anointing. Yes. And I'll never forget, I was up in, of all places, Titusville, Florida. Wow. And there was, I was there at an aglow and someone, I asked them that and, and someone said, well, you know, you need to watch this little girl, <laughs> this little girl. And they said, uh, and they said, you need to, you need to meet Carol, Carol, Carol oh. Tao. I almost think they said Carol Tao. Mm -hmm. and whatever, you know, the, and it's like, because that's your maiden name, right? Mm -hmm. And and so I said, really? And so we called and we set you up and you came to Naples to minister for us. And we, honestly, our hearts connected, you know, I believe you yes. stayed in my home that time. And it's like, we just kind of, we, 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 we hit it off. We hit it off and Same spirit. God connected us, yes. you know. And you know, at that time, and you know, many times we've walked through some, some things in 20 years yes. in your life and my life. And, Absolutely. and you know, but yeah. because of the strength of God between us, yes, there's been times that I have been able to pick up a phone and I maybe haven't talked to you in six months, maybe, you know, or even a year. Exactly. And all of a sudden it was like, that connection absolutely was just right there because again. that's the holy spirit that's in both of us amen you know people that are that are walking in god and are filled with the holy spirit 
they are sometimes closer than even family members within their own family. Yes. Isn't it amazing how that God, for those that have no family, God will give you a family in the body of Christ. Exactly. And so we did, we connected. Because one of the things that I think the reason why is not only just because of the Holy Spirit, but we think alike. You know, yes. I mean, we well, think I like alike. that. I, 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 I take that, okay? <laughs> We're both interested in going forth into the whole world and telling others about Jesus. I was uh, sharing with my husband, I think it was uh, yesterday, and I was saying, Paul said, my ambition is to go where the gospel has never been preached. And I thought about that. It's not bad to have an ambition. Just make sure your ambition is under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And I was sharing with him over that. I said, honey, there's times I feel I lose my zeal. And sometimes I'll see people coming and I should be very uh, zealous to tell them about Jesus. And there have been times, so, you know, when I feel that, I know I need a feeling up. And I'll go to the Lord and say, God, help me to keep, keep my eyes on you. I want the zeal of God to consume me, that when someone comes along my path, I do that, which is extremely important. Tell yes. them about Jesus, because you don't know. You don't know. You may be the only Bible the that old they, saying that they absolutely. may ever get to read. And you may be the only good news they ever hear. Absolutely. Because our world is so filled with bad news and we don't, we don't know what the next thing is going to be. But then we know that's a sign of the time. Yes. And, but if we keep that, and you know what, I think that's what's been a blessing to my heart from you is that you, even though so at times you may not feel like you have that zeal, yeah. <laughs> all you need is someone just to call you and ask you a certain question about and something. That's the truth. <laughs> and and a, like, I, or, or have a dilemma or, or even like in a situation where I was at a year ago or so, and we were just talking about it, where I was in such a painful place, I was hurt by someone and I didn't expect it. And all of a sudden, I don't know how you knew if someone said something to you, I never asked no. you. Never but all of a sudden a you word. called me <laughs> and you called me right in the middle, right in the middle of the happening within like 20, 30 minutes of the happening. And it was like, you needed to talk to me. And it was like, you didn't, I said to my mama, my mama who you love and dearly I love and, her. <laughs> but I said to my mama, I said, I don't know if somebody from, from so-and-so called her, if, if someone informed her, but I want to believe it was just it God. was Jesus. And we didn't even, we haven't it ever was, spoke about that, have uh, we? It went, the timing of your phone call. And it was such a place in my heart that gave me a confidence to know that I had not, not that I had not done anything wrong, because we can all survey yes. the cross and, and, and make sure that we have or haven't. But I knew it was going to be okay. Yes. And there are times that you need that, you know, Barnabas, he was called the son of consolation. You think about his ministry, it was to console others. When Paul was rejected by the leaders of the, of the church, what happened? Barnabas went after him and he went after the one that God had chosen for such a tremendous work for such a time as this. And so me calling you, that's happened to me before as well. And, and me calling you was nothing more than as many are the sons of God, they are led forth by the Spirit of God. So God wanted you to know, I've got your back. If, if I be for you, who can be against you? And so that's exciting. And, and then someone needs to hear <laughs> that today. If God be for you. Amen. Who can be against you? you know, one of the things to uh, Dr. Carol, many times in my life of knowing you and you coming to minister, I don't look for a word. I don't, you know, because in the prophetic, sometimes people just, they'll come out more so for a prophetic yeah, then they will. ministry. So if there was just, you said, there's going to be someone who give their great testimony because they were set free by, by God, but they don't think that's as important as the prophet. And the prophet is one of the fivefold ministries, yes. you know, the, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher, which we understand that those, those are, I don't want to say higher callings, but they're, they're, they are needed callings in the whole church today. We're all called to be soul winners. Amen. We're all called to be lovers of souls. We're all called in different areas, but there's some that are called with different kind of callings. And you are called, I believe, as an apostolic. You, you, you have yeah. unfounded ministries, but you move in what we call 
uh, in fivefold ministry. You are a apostle. You are a prophet. You do evangelize <laughs> and you teach and you uh, uh, pastor. You pastor and, you, and you're a shepherd. <laughs> and uh, but so, but but when you come into different uh, areas, let's let's talk to the people a little bit about what is the prophet versus a prophetic word because a lot of people can give prophetic words or words of wisdom and knowledge yes and and but and because those are in the gifts in the first, yes. first corinthians uh 13 or excuse right. me first Corinthians 12 and then of course the love channel and the love chapter is there on 13 and then the, there's the you know the uh thir 14 where the holy spirit comes into someone and divinely gives them a new language and you know yes. the operation Bring the empower the yes but when someone says prophet carol elaine and you know you, you you for a long time didn't call yourself that, but no. people would say, she's a prophet, she's a prophet. What does that office really mean to the church and why is it necessary to have the activation of the prophet in the body of Christ? We need all fivefold, as you well know, and you beautifully brought that out. We need all fivefold for the edification, the building up, the scripture says, of the body. So the prophet, if you'll study uh, concerning the prophet, the prophet would deliver words, words of en encouragement, sometimes words of rebuke, sometimes words uh, that God was speaking that he was going to even bring judgment. And so we, we look at that and we say, why do we need the prophet? Believe the prophets and so shall you prosper. And so I I'm always looking for a word from the Lord always looking for a word. I want to hear him. He's got a voice. He speaks. Uh, he confirms his word by two or three witnesses. So he has placed within all of us a desire to hear from him. There's a God void inside each and every one of us. Now and so the prophet fulfills that role of delivering even a, a, a rhema, a personal word, to someone. But that God void, I want to just make sure people understand. Yeah. Is that even if you're not a born again or even not if you're a not, Christian? I love it when I give those that are not born again a word from the Lord. Uh, not too far from here, I was at a restaurant and there was a young man there. And I walked up to him and I said, your grandmother has been praying for you. It's time to get right with the Lord. Do you know that he came to my meeting that night? I told him where I was going to be ministering. He brought his sister. He, they all, both came up, were gloriously saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. So when a prophet moves in the gifts of the Spirit, and they reveal. It's more than just prophecy. Prophecy is to bring comfort and edification and exhortation, which means to build somebody up, to urge them on, to con comfort them. But it has no revelation. The simple gift of prophecy has no revelation to it. But a prophet will come in and move in the gift of prophecy and he will bring revelation, the gift of the word of wisdom, which speaks of the will of God or the future, or he'll bring a, the gift of the word of knowledge and it'll work in conjunction with prophecy. And, and this is getting into the gifts of the spirit, but the prophet reveals. They may look at someone and, and, and say, you went through this, that, and the other, and God is bringing you to the future. He's going to work this in your life or do this. And you know, I don't know how many of us, I think every one of us as human beings need to hear God's eye is on me. He's given me a hope, a future, and an expected end. Yes. I'm going to expect him. I, un, not an unexpected end, but an expected end. He wants, it, it, for example, I was thinking about David. David just came across my mind just then. King David was told by Samuel the prophet, you will be the next king. No matter what he went through, he was given hope, future and an expected end. He ran, he was almost killed, people turned against him, but he weathered the storm. And, and years later, I mean, it was like 13 years later after that prophetic word from Samuel, all of a sudden he is crowned king of Judah. Seven, year, seven and a half years later, crowned of all Israel. He waited 
on the Lord. He had that one word. Joseph had one word in the form of a dream. And he was able to make it through all that he went through for 13 years again. He, he was put in, a, uh, he was sold as a slave. Yes, he was lied bed. about. He was thrown in prison. He was put in a dungeon. Yes. You name it, he went through it. And imagine living your life on one word from God. And that's what Joseph did. And then he had to live on another word. So his, his life was ma basically made up of two prophetic words that he lived on. And the second one was when he interpreted the king's dream, exactly. which was seven years of famine and seven years of plenty first. And, and so he prepared for those times. Now, what if he, he had experienced the seven years of plenty and, and started sweating it out, thinking, oh my goodness, I prophesied the dream. They're going to have a seven years of lack. But no, he stood in faith. He stood in faith. That's how important the Word of God is. And a prophet will come and bring a word. That's why the Bible says, believe the prophets. Believe them. If you will believe them, because uh, personal words are conditional. But you have to test, you have to know the prophet too. Exactly. And that's important because just running from here to there to the next thing that you need another fix because you haven't really done your own Oh, it, it, your see, own work. It, it will not make up for a daily life in the Bible and spending time in prayer, you know, to go. And a prophet's um, ministry should be one that will cause others to want to pray, to want to seek the face of God, to want to walk and see. It stirs a desire Yes, in and you. see the fulfillment of their yes. word, which all words are conditional. And, and this is what we need to really talk about. And the church doesn't really teach us. That. And remember, remember back when you just said about Joseph. Yes. Joseph, when he had that vision, it was so real from God. Nothing detoured him exactly. from pressing in to what he believed God had promised. And so he stood on the promise of God. And so if we stand on the promise of God, yes. we don't, you know, and we all get off track. Joseph, yes. I'm sure, you know, we see throughout his, his uh, tender of all these places that he went. The one thing every time David, you just mentioned, every time that men or situations try to derail them from the promise, yes. they always remembered the word. Yes. They remembered the vision. They remembered and then they let that refresh them, refire them, renew them. And then all of a sudden they were able to take the take the pit. They were able to, to be yes. uh, accused of trying to take the, the king's wife. They were, he, they were a, he was able to stand and see the salvation of their, our God. Yes, because be they had an expected end. Because they had faith in God. They yes. kept trusting yes. when trust was seemed trustless. Yes. The, and, and the situations were seemed impossible. Yes. But where did God say, when I hold on to that prophetic word, if I truly believe, like you just said, yes. the, what the prophet said. Yes. And even today, being on television, you pr prophesied that I would go around the world. But well, sometimes I wonder, well, how can I, you know, I don't have time to get one suitcase unpacked. Do you also before the next suitcase needs yes. to be packed? But God has a way even through now demand television, on-demand television, of being able to go around the world. That's and amazing. when it was said in Acts 1, that the Holy Spirit would come, and yes. He said He would go into all of, you know, Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and the utter... Most parts of the earth. Parts of the earth. Who knew yes. what all this technology, all this could do? Absolutely. But yet, it comes back down to trust believing. and it comes believing and also doing your daily daily encouraging word yourself read it for yourself you know sometimes i read and i read and i read i don't i don't i don't think i'm getting anything out of it but all of a sudden when a pit experience comes or a palace experience because it can't it could be you know yes. the worst or the best <laughs> right 
just because you're in the palace don't make it yes. look Joseph proof. Just because you live in the palace doesn't make it grand, yes. right? Yes. But because you kept on believing or and thrown trusting, or like thrown out of the palace, like King David, <laughs> King David. <and> his <laughs> exactly. But the point of it is that when we have that relationship that we accepted Jesus, and then those gifts, and we're made opportunity. But some churches would tell you that prophet gift is dead today. And it is not. I'll tell you what the Lord said to me. I had been going through probably a three year span. I'm, you know, God is so patient, but I, for a three year span, crying out to God, crying out to God, God, I want to finish my course. I, I want to fulfill your purpose, your plan. And I said, I want to be successful and, and not in the eyes of the world, but in your eyes that I know I'm fulfilling the call of God in yes. my life. Yes. And you know what I'm speaking about. Yes. And, and some of you that are watching this, you know what I'm talking about because you're so hungry and thirsty. And so for three years, I was crying out, oh God, I, I want to finish my course. I want to accomplish those things because great is the vision within us. If you have the Holy Spirit, greater is He that is in yes, us yes. than He that is in the world. So greatness is inside of us. And He's ready to explode. That's why he said, go out into all the world. So I'm out walking in the park one day and I'm crying and praying and I come home and I, I started crying, praying. And I th said, God, I'm tired of praying over this. I, I'm not going to pray about it anymore. And the next thing I know, I'm before the sofa laying on the floor crying out. And I heard the Lord speak to me very clearly. Now I had been going through this three years and I hear the Lord speak to me I, and I sat down on the sofa and it was as though he sat right there beside me. I didn't see him, but I knew his presence and I knew his voice. And it takes training to understand his voice. He confirms his word by two or three witnesses. So you always look for confirmation two or three times. If you think something may be of God, ask him to confirm it. And so I sat there and he spoke to me and this is what he said. He spoke to me and it was, I wrote it down at the time and I'm really just kind of paraphrasing some of the things that he said to me, but uh, because it was a long conversation, but he said to me, he said, why do you think that, that David was prosperous and successful in all the things that he did? And it said that he was pr prosperous and successful. And I remember saying, he said, do you think it was because he was the sweet psalmist of Israel? He worshiped me. He was a worshiper. I said, yes, Lord, that's why. He said, I have many sweet psalmists and I have many sweet worshipers. Then he said, do you, and I had just studied where he had tremendous managerial skills, you know, with the training of all these men and sitting in uh, office and even when he, uh, setting up for Solomon, the workers in the temple. And so I, I was thinking about his managerial skills and I, he said, do you think it was because he was a great manager? And I said, yes, Lord. And he said, I have many managers that are apt and have ability. And, and, he, and, I, and then he just began, do you think it is because, um, because all Israel loved him? Yes, Lord. I, do you think it was because he was a warrior? And he just kept asking me. Finally, he was waiting for me to get to the point where, where I said, I don't know. <laughs> and I finally said, I don't know. Why was he successful and prosperous in all that he did? And I heard the Lord speak to me as clearly as everything. He said, because he surrounded himself with the prophets and the seers. And he believed the word that they spoke. And you know, when I started counting, counting up, and you're including those that even the grandson of Samuel that sang in the temple, Heman and um, Jaduthon who had his own choir the family and they all prophesied. I started counting up and I lost count, I think around 40 something prophets. You had Gad, Nathan, you had all these different prophets. And all of a sudden I saw something and he said to me, believe the prophets and so shall you prosper. So I start studying about David and I found out that some of them were called David's seer, David's prophet. I'm looking at that, it's in the Bible. 
And I said, okay, this isn't fair, God. I want my own prophet and I want my own seer. I started telling him. And he said to me, surround yourself from those who hear from me that walk in the prophet anointing. And so shall you prosper. And so shall you have good success. Amen. I even called up three or four people and I said, uh, would you be a prophet in my life? <laughs> would you be a seer in my life? A seer is one that has, it sees things. And they're not always going to just see the good things. Exactly. Because David had people who came to him and they said And to rebuked him. him. Yeah. Yeah, like Samuel. Yeah, big yeah. time, big time. And you better be <laughs> and ready he didn't, for that. And he didn't even realize it was <laughs> himself that Samuel was talking about. Yes. He had to like take it and Tim would go like, no, yes. I'm talking about you. you know? So that is, and who qualifies to be a prophet. Who qualifies? The one whom God has set. So God does choose that gift. He, many are called, few are chosen. Now, uh, you've asked a very interesting question. There are many called today to function in the body of Christ. Many apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, psalmists, uh, choir directors. I mean, we could go on and on. Uh, uh, lay people, to managerial. Yes, yes. I mean, we could go yes. on and on. But those that would cook and run the kitchen at the church. Yes. 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 But, Intercessors. Many are called, but few will separate themselves for God to choose them and set them in a place. So many are called, but few are chosen because Few, and you think about that, that's amazing. Many, few, many are called, few are chosen because few will, will separate themselves to say as Isaiah said, here I am, Lord, send me. And that's the bottom line. What qualifies one to be a prophet? It is one that will separate themselves under the Lord. Now, I'll tell you something about a prophet's life. Prophets suffer. They suffer. They identify. And their life is not always easy. Sometimes they're held in ridicule. They're mocked. I've had that happen to me on many occasions, Sheila. And if I had... Uh, wanted to, I could have become so discouraged that I just raised up and quit and said, oh, I can't take the mockery anymore. I can't take the, you know, I remember a time when I was holding a meeting and I had a whole group of people come uh, uh, one week and their whole aim was, let's go watch the circus because mm. they really thought something, they thought it was hilarious. The God was moving. They thought it was funny. I want you to know that there was a wife sitting on one end, a husband on the other, and in between were all their friends. I went running down there under the unction of the Holy Spirit <laughs> because as I was preaching, the Spirit of God fell on the woman. Mm -hmm. And they had been there the week before without my knowledge. So now they have bring, brought this whole group of people to make fun. But what happened during the time I was preaching, the Holy Spirit got a hold. And I said, stand up, be filled with the Holy Spirit. And she started speaking in tongues. Now, me not knowing who they were, not knowing that they were a couple together, I took off and I ran on the other side and grabbed the man and said, stand up, be filled with the Holy Spirit. And he starts speaking in other tongues. The power of God went through that whole row. Revival broke out. But I'm going to tell you something. Being a prophet is not always easy. People will mock you. Uh, they will also not quite understand the condition. If you will do this, God will do that. Well, they don't do that and God doesn't do that. And you have to be bold enough to say, I remember a little boy, he came and testified at one of our meetings. I had, he was 10 years old when he came to one of my meetings and I called him out and I said, uh, you like to work on bicycles. And, 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 but I said, I hear the, the Lord say that when you get to be a young man, you will work on airplanes. Forgot about it. Didn't even remember the boy. All of a sudden, my associate pastor comes running up to me and he said, there's a young man here. He says he has to testify. He's not been here in 12 years. 
-hmm. He stands up and he says, she prophesied not knowing that my father had a bicycle shop and I worked every weekend on bicycles. I have just been given a job. I am working on big commercial airplanes now. And he said, she prophesied that over me. And so, you know, that's someone waiting for the for the word to come to right. pass. And, and the proof is that when you prophesy and if people follow through, because obedience, it's a, obedience a, a, a is better in there. than sacrifice. <laughs> but you know, when you, when you as a, had that word of wisdom and knowledge of that young man with the yes. bicycle, all of a sudden he knew that he was going to be working on airplanes one day yes. because he was already working on the bicycles. Yes. And that's what God does. God will use what you're already doing to get you to where he has you to go. And I have a hope, yeah, we're going to have to close. There's so much more we can do, <laughs> no. but, but if there is a calling on your life as a prophetic, maybe you've been, like Sister Carol just talked about, maybe you have been made fun of, maybe you have been uh, mocked, maybe people have said, you know, you need to just stop that, that thinking. You just need to stop that. You know, you're just going off the deep end. Those, the, those died when the apostles and the prophets died in the Bible, they di that died too. Well, you need to ask God, are you the one who have given me this gift? Are you the one who have given me this, this call? And if he has, then you, like Sister Carol just said, Dr. Carol just said, you need to get yourself around some prophets and, and ministers yes. of the gospel that will encourage you, that will correct you, but will also say, step out of, step out of the boat. You need to walk on some water because there's a call of God upon your life. And I'm encouraging today. I believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I believe in the whole Bible from index to maps. I believe that the whole thing is for us today and that there is a God that loves you. And there is a God that wants you, just like Dr. Carol Lane. He wants you to minister to people. He wants you to love on people. And he wants you to be the one that sets the captives free. So I'm going to encourage you, if you have been blessed by this ministry, today, you contact us. I'll, if you need to get Dr. Carol Lane's, it should be up on the screen, her information. And I'm going to encourage you, if you do not, maybe, maybe there's someone out there because Sister Carol said a word. She said there may be a uh, you know, there's a, there's a God void in all of us. There's a void inside of us. Maybe you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior yet. And maybe that void is there and you, you're suffering with depression. You're suffering with, with mental anxiety. You're suffering with even sickness or, or, or maybe even disease. Maybe you financially, you've just, you know, you feel like you've been bat broken, battered and bruised and there's no hope. There is hope in Jesus Christ. Amen. There is hope. And maybe today you didn't get that perfect word you wanted, but God's given you the word you needed, which is he's everything. He's all you're ever going to need. And if you'll call upon his name, he is there. I'm Pastor Sheila Zellers and Motivated by Love Ministries is our, our ministry name. Motivatedbylove.org is our website. Visit us there. Let us know that you're watching and let us know if you have a prayer request, if you accepted Jesus Christ today during this broadcast, it's a simple prayer as I told you at the beginning. All you have to say is, Father God, I accept your son Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Forgive me of all my sin and make me more like your son Jesus. Fill me with your Holy Spirit that I will be able to walk, talk, and operate in the spirit of the living God. And I want to be like your son Jesus. And I promise you, he will come into your life. He'll come into your heart to live. And there's no, there's no color. There's no creed. There's no education. There's no financial. There's nothing that's going to limit you from accepting Jesus except for you. He wants you to be his child and he wants you to be set free today. I thank you, Dr. Carol Lane, for thank being with you. me today. <laughs> and we look forward to seeing you again soon yes. here on Motivated by Love Ministries, hosted by Pastor Sheila. God bless you.